422.13, storage type water heaters. I actually really like this change. The rules addressing the ampacity of conductors for water heaters were simplified and we made similar changes in other sections for the same reason. Let's take a look at what it says. And by the way, if you've been using the code for a while, when you first see this, you might recognize that it's not necessarily a change, but a clarification. Conductors and overcurrent devices must not be less than 125% of the rating of fixed storage type water heaters that have a capacity of 120 gallons or less. Again, if you've done this calculation before, you might be looking at this saying, well, that's not a change, that's always been the case, and you're probably right. But what it used to say is that uh, fixed storage type water heaters with a capacity of 120 gallons or less are considered a continuous load. And then we'd have to figure out, okay, continuous load, I've heard that phrase, and you go back to Article 100 and you look at the definition, and it says it's a load where the maximum current is expected to run continuously for three consecutive hours or more. Which left you scratching your head because I've never seen a water heater, not that I can think of, that actually runs at its peak for three straight hours. So right off the bat you're getting upset because you're thinking, well that's stupid, water heaters are not continuous loads. But here we have this rule telling us to pretend that they are. And then once you acknowledge that and you just accept it, then you have to think, okay, fine, they're a continuous load. What does that mean? What do I have to do now? And you have to go back to 210.19 uh, A1A, I think, and it says for continuous loads, you need to have a conductor ampacity of not less than 125% of the rating of the appliance. And then you go to 210.20 and it says for the overcurrent device, not less than 125% of its rating. Well, why do I have to go through all of those mental gymnastics? We know that a water heater is not really a continuous load. So what it says now, I, I really like. It just says, look, conductors and overcurrent devices must not be less than 125% of the rating of fixed storage type water heaters that have a capacity of 120 gallons or less. It doesn't matter that it's continuous or not continuous. Forget all that argument. We're not even going to go there. It just says, listen, take it at 125%. So let's do this together. Here I've got a fixed storage type water heater. It's a small one, but you know, they, they make small ones, right? So storage type meaning that it's not uh, a tankless water heater. So 2.7 gallon, little guy, but that's fine. Single phase, 120 volts, 1440 watts. Okay, so let's start rolling here. 1440 watts times, pardon me, 1440 watts divided by 120 volts is 12 amps. Okay, good. 12 amps, 125% of that is 15 amps. So I need a 15 amp wire and at least a 15 amp circuit breaker. Okay, well, 15 amp wire we know is 14 gauge. I could put it on a 15 amp breaker, go home, we're done. Or if I wanted to, when I'm sizing the overcurrent device, I would go to section 422.11, and I know this is not quite the section that we're talking about, but it's very much related. 422.11E2 says for a single non-motor operated appliance that's this small, when it comes to the breaker, maximum 20 amps. Now, I don't have to use a 20 amp breaker. If I did, I'd have to use 12 gauge wire, but I could use a 15 amp breaker and 14 gauge wire, and that would be fine too. Let's do one more example. Here I've got a 4,500 watt water heater and it is 240 volts. So let's clear off the calculator. I take my 4,500 watts divided by 240 volts. That gives me 18.75 amps. So we know that the conductor has to be at least 125% of that and the breaker or fuse. So it has to be at least 23 amps, 10 gauge wire. Right, 10 gauge wire we know is good for 30 amps, 12 gauge is good for 20. So we're gonna use a 10 gauge wire and it has to be at least a 23 amp overcurrent device. So let's go with a 25 amp breaker or fuse. 25 amp is a standard rating. However, going back to the overcurrent device rules, 422.11E3 for slightly larger appliances says, yeah, you have to have at least 125%, but you can actually go up to 150% if you want. Okay, well, maybe that's what we want. 4,500 watts divided by 240 volts, 18.75 times 150% is 28 amps. There's no such thing as a 28 amp breaker. 
I go to table 240.6a and we could confirm that fact and then we would also find out which one is the next standard higher rating and that would be 30. So if you wanted to, I could put it on a 30 amp breaker. Either way, I'm using 10 gauge wire because it has to carry 23 amps. I could use 10 gauge wire on a 25 amp breaker, that would be fine. Or I could use 10 gauge wire on a 30 amp breaker, that too would be fine. Let's do one more example really quick before we call it a day. Same piece of equipment, different voltage. 4,500 watt water heater. Well, I shouldn't even say that. I have a water heater that's rated 4,500 watts at 240 volts, and that's the key. But I'm putting this in an apartment, and my, my apartment complex is supplied with a three-phase 120, 208 volt service, which is becoming more and more common, by the way. So each unit has single phase, two hots and a neutral, 120, 208. So I'm actually gonna apply 208 to this water heater and see what that does. Now, the key here is this. A lot of people are going to screw up and they're gonna take 4,500 watts divided by 208. And they're gonna say, okay, cool, this thing pulls 21 amps. No, it does not. The wattage is a computation that the manufacturer put down on there just for our benefit. The fact of the matter is, if I apply it at 208, the wattage changes. What's constant here is the resistance. Think about the, a water heater. In fact, before we do that, a water heater, an electric water heater, and a toaster oven are very much the same piece of equipment. Only a toaster oven, you can actually see what happens. You plug the, to the toaster in, you push the button down, and then you see that little wire, that heating element, and we give it a voltage, and we get it to the point where it's almost catching on fire. Right, It's right at the point of failure. It is glowing red hot. And that's the same concept with a water heater. We basically short circuit it out, but in a controlled manner so that it glows red hot. It's almost ready to fail. It's glowing hot and it heats up our water heater. That resistor, that wire, doesn't change its properties based on the voltage applied. Whatever that resistance is, is what the resistance is. So really, we need to figure out what the resistance is of this water heater before we can start really doing anything with it. So we have a 4,500 watt water heater at 240, but we need to figure out the resistance. And the formula for that is gonna be voltage squared divided by power. So let's take our 240 times 240 equals 57,600. We're gonna divide that by our wattage which is 12.8 ohms. That resistor is 12.8 ohms, and I don't care if I'm applying 120, 208, or 28,000, the resistor is 12.8 ohms. So, we need to figure out the current now that we know the voltage, 208, and the resistance, 12.8. So, we're going to take current equals voltage divided by resistance. So we know the voltage is 208. Let's divide that by 12.8 ohms. 16.25 amps. Now we need a wire that can carry 16.25 times 125%. So we're going to multiply that out. I need a 20.3 amp wire. All right, what a great calculation because section 220.5b says when you do the math and it ends in a decimal, you can get rid of up to 0 0.5 amps or less. So in other, words, in other words, we're gonna round down to 20 amps. So I need a 20 amp wire, which we know is 12 gauge. So we're gonna put this on a 12 gauge wire, run it right at 20 amps, put it on a 20 amp breaker, run it right at 20 amps, and we're A-OK. -okay. And that is not gonna be a problem. The breaker's not gonna trip, the wire's gonna melt, and everything is gonna be fine. If you want to get in touch with me, there's how you do it. My name's Ryan, Ryan Jackson Electrical Training, ryanjacksonelectrical.com. There's my email address. I hope you got something out of this. Have a great day.